Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. Today, well, today has finally arrived. As today, I finally get to cover one of my favorite judges to watch, Judge Fleischer. As he had a sovereign citizen in his courtroom yesterday, and he was absolutely ready to destroy him. So let's begin. Good morning, Mr. Emmettum. Do you have a lawyer today? Uh, no, representing to myself. You are charged with unlawful carrying of a weapon. It looks like you also, out of the same charge, picked up a fraud as well. Um, I mean, okay, you can represent yourself. That's your absolute right. I mean, that's, I don't know how smart it is. Have you ever represented yourself before? Yeah, many times. And how did that go? I have many dismissals. For what kind of cases? I had a dismissal on unlawful carry before. And you represented yourself? Yes. In in this in, in this, this court? Paris County. Just found no PC. Oh, well, I found no probable cause. That's why I got dismissed. You didn't represent yourself. I, I was representing myself, but the judge did find no probable cause. <laughs> I found wait, was it me? No, no, it wasn't you. It was well, I don't know. I think it June, was you. June 9, 2022. I found no probable cause. I think that was you. You didn't represent yourself for nothing, man. I did it. No. Okay, so, uh, well, you can hope and wish and dream, whatever. I'm sure you can already see why I like Judge Fleischer so much. He calls it as he sees it. And right now, he sees a crayon eater who wants to represent himself. Um, if you want to represent yourself, you're more than, you're entitled to do that, right? But, yeah, a lot, while I like to tell people it's like brain surgery, when you need brain surgery, when you need heart surgery, you know, are you going to do that on yourself? because you're not trained, you know, you don't know how to perform open heart surgery. Same thing with the law, you know, you're not trained in it. I, I mean, I'm assuming that you're not, you didn't go to law school, did you? What, how far did you get in school? I graduated school, I went to some college. How far did you get? Two years I got a certificate. I mean, not through college, but I went to school. Okay, so I'm, we're in the middle of trial now. Um, and so I don't have the time to go through all of what they're called Feretta warnings to see whether you should um, represent yourself. I'm happy to do that. Um, why don't we delay it off one, like a week? Are you, are you working at this time? Uh, yeah, and I, I stay in Austin. I don't live in Houston, so. Uh, what do you do for a living? I have my own business. Doing what? Resale. Resale clothing, how uh, much, audio production. How much money do you make a month? Uh, I can't tell you, but it's to pay some bills. You're very cryptic in all of your answers. You know, and not only that, but you going to Austin, if you represent yourself, you're going to have to meet with the DAs on a constant basis to get evidence. So that's going to require you to come here to Houston yeah, to quite a bit. I was ready to find my motion today if I needed to be. If we OK, before I do that, though, I need to have a Feretta hearing. Um, if you're willing to wait, we can do that a little bit later when I take a break in trial. Um, I had this one. I had my other case um, upstairs the same day. The judge from when I came to have my last year. there yet? No, I haven't been up okay, there Okay, so go up there. When you're done, come back down here. Oh. Don't forget to come back. If you don't come back, I'm going to issue a warrant. Go take care of yourself upstairs and come back. So at this point, the defendant heads off to another courtroom so he can deal with his other matters. After that, he returns for his Feretta hearing, which is essentially a competency exam to ensure that he has the ability to defend himself. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So today is... September 11th, 2024, it's approximately 12.25 p.m. Um, we are now in court five. In front of me, I have Eaton Emetum, case number 25226888. Would you please identify yourself for purpose of the record? Live man, Eaton Emetum. Would you please raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to so help you God? That you're going to tell the truth. That's it. Yes? Okay. Um, state, would you identify? Okay. So um, the reason that we're putting this on the record now is um, Mr. Emmettom has been charged with the offense of unlawful carrying of a weapon. Um, the case is 40 days old. It appears that probable cause has already been found. I don't know if I did probable cause on this or if I don't know if another judge did, because um, I don't, I don't remember Mr. Emmettum and I was out a week. 
Yeah, log, lollygagging. So let's just do it for... <clears throat> so on August 2nd, 2024, officers observed a car without a front license plate, changed lanes without a signal, and have expired registration as of March 2023. Upon approaching, officers smelled marijuana. PC search returned 4.17 grams and a Lotus Smith & Wesson handgun. Additionally, there was a backpack with three checks that did not belong to him. Officer called Kumamoto, who said the checks were stolen from her restaurant on July 8th. When defendant broke the front window, went to the back where the checks were kept in the office, broke the hinge of the back door and exited. So um, as a result, because of that, he was charged with felony fraud on that one, That's on the check. Okay. Yes, he has an open case in the 182nd. Looks like he made a $15,000 bond. With us, I am going to find there's probable cause to go forward. Um, Ms. Well, hold on a second. We'll, we'll get there. I, I, I'll let you say your piece, but do you have a Texas driver license? I have a U.S. Dot private property number with uh, the FMCSA. Uh, what my vehicle was on there, it was sticker tags, everything with my business, the Amazon Estates. That's with the Department of Transportation. Is that from the state of Texas or from where? This is federal. This is with the Department of Transportation. Okay, no, but you still need a Texas driver license and you um, need registration and I did on all a vehicle. my best with them because it was private property that I had. They said I didn't uh, if I didn't need to get registration with the state of Texas because I registered it. They said that would be my uh, volunteer, but since it's private property, I'm gonna have to register it. Okay. Um from what I know of the law, you need a Texas driver license to be able to drive. Um, I was, I mean, it, it's, 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 what jurisdiction is this case being tried on? That's what I'm trying to, because I'm kind of don't know what it's being tried on. It's criminal. Civil or, criminal. Yeah. Or right. It, You're facing jail time, right? Uh, I believe so. But, Weren't you taken to jail? Yeah. So that wouldn't lead you to believe it's criminal, right? Yeah, but... Under common law, or is it military and tribune? Because also with oh, the I've been waiting for something like this for so long. <laughs> this is so much fun. Yeah, it's about to be a lot of fun. And I think the last thing that any sovereign citizen wants to see is a judge who laughs at him in his face and tells him how much he's been waiting for this moment. I'm just trying to see this on what I'm being tried on because what I was told with with the US side, I wouldn't have to register with the state of Texas with the registration or licensing. I do have my own place with that vehicle too as well, so. Um, do you need a license to drive, a Texas driver license? That's, that's it. You either have one or you don't. The federal government has regulated to the states through the constitution that they have allowed the states on their own initiative to create laws regarding driving on highways and byways. So that's why you see every single state has different requirements for licensing, insurance, um, mode of transportation. It, it, the federal government has somewhat to do with it, but by and large, they have delegated to the states that they are their own entity with regard to creating laws in their specific highways. So that's why every single state has a different type of license, different type of insurance. Like the Texas driver license is what white versus Arkansas might be yellow or red or Hawaii might be. So that's every single state has their own laws with regard. In Texas, you have to have a Texas driver license. You also have to have liability insurance as a minimum in the event that you get into an accident. Those are the two main requirements that you need to drive. If you're going to drive a vehicle, it also has to be registered so that they know that you're driving the vehicle and that you own it or have the right to have that so it's not a stolen vehicle. Um, I, I own the vehicle and everything. When I was here at the last hearing with the judge, like what he was saying, he said that when it had applied to me, but he was going to see what they were going to say about the other court, about the probable cause of stopping me because he said registration went ahead in the front license plate when it had applied to me. It does apply to you. It applies to everybody. Everybody has to have a back license plate. 
They also have to have a front license plate. In so much, they also tell you where it has to be on the car. They regulate. You can't put it in the windshield. State, right? State. Yeah. Right. They tell you where it has to be. You can't put it on the windshield. You can't put it on, um, like on what's it called? The uh, on the light. <laughs> It's got to be right there. They even tell you how many centimeters it's supposed to be from the street to the actual place on the car. That's how bad the state of Texas micromanages all these things. They even tell you how many damn centimeters it's got to be on the car. So you have to have a front license plate. You got to have a license, got to have insurance. Um, so if you don't have that, you can't drive. And that's it. Yeah, I stayed to tell them I was traveling. I wasn't arguing with them, but I was traveling. I wasn't making commerce. I used to do medical transportation, so I'm kind of aware with licensing and registration and everything. That's why with my private vehicles, I did that with the U.S. diet instead of the state. And I didn't know that was correct. You, have, you said, need a license. It doesn't matter whether you're saying you're conveying, whether you're traveling, whether you're, um, you know, driving. A, it's a privilege. It's not a right, right? There's a big difference between a privilege versus a right. You have the right to walk. I have the right to travel, don't I? Yeah, and taking your happy-go-lucky feet. You want to travel? That's Take me. those two feet to travel, uh -huh. not in a car. Just what the 14th Amendment was saying, like, I have the right to travel. You do. Yes, and you can walk your happy ass from one part to the other part. Not in a car, though. Not without a license and insurance. On the Damn, Judge Fleischer just told him that if he wants to travel, he can walk his happy ass anywhere he wants, just not in a car or behind the wheel of a vehicle. Now that's cold-blooded, Judge, and I love it. When I, I did this with the Department of Transportation, they said automobiles were on there, carrier, on bicycles. They're wrong. I'm just telling you now, they're wrong. Whoever told you that, whatever, whoever, where you got that, Agency. it's complete. Because imagine this, Mr. Emmett Tom. And I've seen this before. Imagine that you get into an accident, right? And you kill a five-year-old kid. What's going to happen at that point? Whoever owns that car, the other people, they're going to come after you. They're not going to go after all. They're going to come after you. The first thing they're going to do is, do you have insurance? And if you don't have insurance, they're going to sue you. And then they're going to attach a lien on absolutely everything that you own to satisfy the judgment they get against you. And they will take your house, they will take your car, they will take your bank account, they will attach to where if you ever want to start working and get a paycheck, they're gonna garnish all that money. You have insurance, liability insurance, so that if you ever get into an accident, you don't mean to do it. You, don't, you didn't mean to kill the kid. It's not an, an purposement. It was, it's an accident. And accidents happen. You might be looking at your phone. You're looking at, you know, this pretty girl that's walking across the street. And then, boom, you know, you have insurance so that if that happens, the insurance company will pay on your behalf so you don't have to pay out of your own pocket. And they will even give you a lawyer to represent you on your behalf. Because that's what you pay for when you get insurance. If you get into an accident, lawyers usually call you and say, hey, man, tell me what happened. Was it your fault? Or was it the other people's fault? Because we want to know who to pay. And that's why for $30 to $40 a month, you get insurance for that very purpose. And I've seen people come here. They have killed someone and they get a $250,000 judgment against them. I've seen it. And God, you, it, you'll never dig yourself out of that. So the conveying, the this, that, you need a license. You've got to have insurance. And we do it with every single person that comes here. Can I say for the unlawful carry, the, the possession of marijuana, the person that was in the vehicle told the uh, officer, it wasn't, it was legal hemp that they got from the store. They have receipts and everything in Texas. You can have legal hemp. They got it from the store, even told the officer it was theirs. He pulled me out the car. He didn't ask for any paperwork. Now, I mean, now you're, you're, you're making the apple, apples and oranges, right? Now we got to test it. Is it weed? Oh, yeah. We, we, Is it him? Understand that takes time. But you also need a lawyer to represent you. Uh, I found my own discovery. I was representing myself, pro se. And you can do that if you want. Yeah. But we have to go through a series of questions. I represented myself plenty of times. I had dismissals here from Remember, Harris County. And, and for purposes of the record, um, so Mr. Emmett Tom had a case with me here 
Um, it was May. It was actually June 7th of 2022. He was charged with another gun case. And that was with Victor Victoriano. God, that was a great DA too. Um, and I found no probable cause in that case. Right. So you didn't represent yourself in that case. I found no probable cause and they dismissed it. They didn't have to dismiss it, but they did dismiss it. So <clears throat> other than that case, have you ever represented yourself? Yeah, many times. So I have dismissals all through here from Harris County. Traffic okay. violations. Uh... You're welcome to do it, you know, and, you know, who's one of the worst, who's one of the best presidents that, that in history? that you can think about right now Beautiful. to me right now do you can't think of one good president that we've ever had i don't know any abraham lincoln he wasn't good i never met him i don't know about him at that time abraham lincoln said something he goes you know what he who represents himself has a fool for a client and an idiot for a lawyer meaning that when you represent yourself there is an inherent conflict and there's an inherent bias and you may not be able to see things objectively, meaning that you have your heart, you've got your soul into this case. So you may not be able to see from an outside position if they're same, same, saying something that makes sense. You're absolutely entitled to represent yourself. And if you wanna do that, you're more than welcome to it. And I have no problem with you doing it. You need to understand though, if you represent yourself, you can't come at a later day and say, you know what? I, I had ineffective assistance of counsel. My lawyer sucked. Well, you represented yourself. You now can't complain about that. You know, if you, if you go to trial and you lose and I end up putting your butt in jail for a year, you can't complain. You're stuck like Chuck for a whole year because that's what you're facing. You're facing a year in jail and you got a bunch of other documents too that, you know, so. Um, let my discovery from that last month that I followed. Well, let's, let's, let's do the, let's do the question. So your full, what is your full name? Amaton, she's Roque Amaton. Okay. How old are you? I'm 34. Where were you born? In America. Were you born here in Houston? Were you born in... Okay. You read, you read and write English, right? Yes. Okay. Um, do you have any learning disabilities or communication handicaps? Have you ever been declared mentally incompetent or treated for any mental health disorder? Okay. Um, you said last time I asked you about your educational background. You graduated from high school. Graduated right high school at some college. How far did you get in college? About two, three, two and a half years. Did you get to any? Did you do any legal courses whatsoever? I left that and I started doing medical transportation. I was taking classes for paramedics. I was. I was well, just doing my studying, basics. I was doing my basics. Studying in college. I was just doing my basics. I. Getting yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, that makes sense. And, and when you're beginning, that's all you do anyways, right? Do you have any legal training, education, or experience? Experience with dealing with the court being charged before. And any other legal? Have you, do you know about the Code of Criminal Procedure? Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar. Do you know about the Texas Penal Code? I'm not I'm familiar, but I'm not too many familiar with a lot of statutes and codes. Okay. Were you here for our earlier trial? No, I went upstairs. I know, I know you went to the felony court, but we were in trial earlier. Did you see what happened in trial earlier? I like a glimpse of it walking. Okay. What I'm trying to say is that the lawyers on both sides had to introduce evidence. There's a, there's a specific procedure that you have to follow to have evidence admitted. It's detailed in the codes. You have to know that because once you represent yourself, I'm going to treat you as if you were a lawyer I will hold you to the same standard and I'm not here to put you through law school because I have way too much drama as it is. I don't need any more drama. Right. So if you don't do it the right way, I'm going to shut you down. Right. I like to be nice to people, but I'm not taking you to school. Do you understand this? Um, do you understand the charges against you? I don't, I don't understand the nature of it. Okay. You're charged with unlawful carrying of a weapon. You're facing up to a year in jail. What they're saying is that you unlawfully had a weapon. As a result, you were charged, and now you're facing up to a year. Do you understand? Yeah, worth the telling me, but I still don't understand like why I went to jail for that. So that's why. I'm... What do you not understand? Uh, the court procedures or 
I'm no, not, no, no, no. I'm asking I'm about the that. nature of the charges. No, it's not. Don't look. Don't talk no, about the procedures. Don't talk about the licensing. About the conveying. Yeah, no, I'm getting charged when I'm about to care. And right. The, Do you understand that? Yeah. What's going on? Okay. Um, you have the right, or you understand the range of punishment that you're facing a year, correct? That's what I've been told. Okay. You have the right to court appointed counsel. Do you want counsel to represent you? I don't want legal advice. I don't need a legal team. I just want law. I just. If I yeah. offer you a lawyer now, would you I want it? Don't. You really don't want a lawyer? I represent myself. I could get none more by myself than anyone representing me. And that comment right there is exactly why you shouldn't represent yourself. You seem to believe that you know what's best for yourself. And that inherent belief that exists in all of us is what gives you an unavoidable bias that will cloud your ability to defend yourself. Okay. Um, do you understand that you will not be able to claim ineffective assistance counsel if you lose at a later time? whether it's in trial, whether it's in a hearing, whether anything, if you understand that. What that means is that you cannot appeal this thing. If you're found guilty and you go to jail, you know, a lot of lawyers or a lot of defendants like to claim, sorry guys, I'll be two minutes. A lot of lawyers, a lot of um, defendants like to blame their lawyers for screwing up. And they say, hey, man, my lawyer messed up. I, I can tell you, like, that's the number one thing that defendants complain about. And, and probably, I don't know this for sure, but I would suspect probably the number one reason why cases are overturned because of ineffective assistance of counsel, meaning that a lawyer, for one reason or other, messed up and messed up so bad that their cases have to be redone. You cannot complain about that at a later time. I've seen that many times. That's why I'm representing myself. But you can't, if you mess up, you cannot appeal this thing. Do you understand? Once and if you are found guilty, that's it. Do you understand? Um, you also have to comply with the same appellate procedures if you lose, meaning that if you want to appeal for one reason or the other, you have to uh, understand the guidelines and the timing, and you have to comply with those rules as well. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. You will not be granted any special consideration because of your lack of formal training. Do you understand this? Um, you may fail to properly raise points of error in the trial record if we go to trial. Meaning that if we go to trial and you object to something, because that's you, we, you hear that a lot, right? I object. I, this shouldn't be in there. You have to object properly. There's not, you can't just say object. There has to be more to it. You have to state the reason for the objection. It has to be a legal reason. You can't just say, I object and expect me to hold something out. You have to give the legal reason. And there's a proper method that you have to state and ask me to do things for it to be recognized on appeal. And if you don't know this, you cannot at a later date complain. Well, I didn't know that. You understand. You still don't want a lawyer. I, I will give you a free lawyer. Is this voluntarily, knowingly, and intelligently made? No one's forcing you to do this. Okay. Um, knowing all this, are you sure that you still want to represent yourself? I Look, I, I got to tell you, I think that you're... You look like a great guy. You look like you're upstanding. I, I have no problems that you represent yourself. Understand that you need to be careful what you tell them, though. Everything that you say, even if you think you're hurting yourself by admitting one thing or the other, you could be hindering your case, meaning hurting your case, even if you think you're helping yourself. Do you understand? I'll make you a deal. If at any time you want a lawyer, all you got to do is ask, and I'll give you one. Really, if you ever feel like you're under the gun, that you feel like someone's taking advantage of you, I'm happy to give you a lawyer at any time. I want you to understand now, as a condition of your bond, though, I'm ordering you not to drive until you have a Texas driver license and a liability insurance. I'm ordering you not to drive. And I'm going to have you sign with me today an affidavit promising me you're not going to drive. If I find that you drive, I'm going to put you in jail. Do you understand? 
travel. I have personal. Okay. You are not allowed to get into the driver's seat of a car and drive, convey, travel, however you want to term it. You cannot do that. And if I find that you do that, I'm going to put you in jail and I'm going to make your bond so high, your head's going to spontaneously combust. Do you understand? That way from my right standing thing? Or- no, but I'm telling you that you can't, you can't drive, convey, get into the driver's seat of a car. If you do, you're going to go to jail because I will revoke your bond. Do you understand? I would say yes, he understands. But that really depends on how much sniffable super glue he's consumed this morning. And as much as Judge Fleischer is really pushing the point, he just doesn't get it. The only conditions I'm putting on you now are three. No weapons. No picking up new cases. And don't get into the driver's seat of a car and drive, convey, travel. Are there any other adjectives? you can think of I'm sure there are but <clears throat> i guess i'll put etc so that it tries to um cover any type of um wording so to speak all right so mr Emmetom, i'm going to find that you're that you are okay to represent yourself we need you to sign a form that you're going to do that even if i don't consent to any of these charges because i do have my paperwork i do have if you don't consent if you paperwork. don't consent just go if you don't think we have jurisdiction, look, if I didn't think anyone had jurisdiction over me, do you think I would be here? If I was in, in your shoes? Hell no, man. If I didn't think that someone didn't have jurisdiction over me to be anywhere, I'm not going there. I'm not going to get out, take a shower, put my clothes on because I like to be naked. Right. You know, I'm not doing anything like that. You know, so if you don't think we have it, just go. Otherwise, you're here. You know, we do. Right, because if you, I don't know. That's why I thought. Let me ask you this: If you just took off now, what would happen? There you go. What does that warrant mean? Um, What does it mean? On or what do you what do you mean as far as like the warrant? As far as jurisdiction is concerned, do you think that? Look, do you think that an officer is going to go out? and actually pick someone up if they didn't think they had jurisdiction to do? Do you know how much trouble they would get in? Do you know no, if Stephen went out there and arrested someone now just for shits and giggles, do you know how much trouble he would get in? Right? If he had no reason to do it, do you know how much trouble he would get in? Right, A lot. He'd lose his job. He'd probably get sued. Right, he Can't claim immunity. He'd be, he'd be toast. Swiss cheese. So that's what I'm saying. If you didn't really think that we didn't have jurisdiction, then go. I had to take care of this matter because if it because was, you know we have jurisdiction. I don't know because I was going to go to five one five arrest and file my lawsuit, my civil lawsuit with the officer who did arrest me because they did some unlawful, unconstitutional things that they did to me at that time. So I was going to take it there. You know, I didn't believe they had jurisdiction over me. I would wait to see how this case goes first before you do that. You know, see how the case goes first before you start jumping the gun. Like that's what I was waiting. You know, but ultimately, you know, if I didn't think anyone had jurisdiction over me, I'm not going to go there, man. I have enough important things to do in my life as it is. I mean, you've si- you've been sitting here since eight thirty in the morning, where it's now nearly one o'clock. You know what I mean? Really. Finally, a judge who breaks it down and explains it in the simplest terms, so that even a sovereign simpleton can understand it. If you leave. What will happen? If nothing will happen, then clearly the courts have no jurisdiction over you. But if you get arrested and put in jail, then the courts do have jurisdiction over you. Let's get this thing done. That way you can move on with your life. We can move on with our life and just everybody be happy. That's what it's about. All we want to do is protect our city. That's all we want to do, you know, and I'm going to do it at at all costs. That's it. All right. I'm going to have you sign this affidavit. After that, we'll get you out of here. And um, so, Mr. Emmetong, you are going to have to make a plan to meet with Mr. Petrov here so that you guys can exchange evidence. This is, he is our chief DA here. He's the one who gets all the evidence that's going to present it to you. You can either do it here in court with us, 
or you can meet with them at their office because you're going to have to get the evidence to look at it regardless. I'm happy to take any motions that you have now and I can look at them and then we can come back at a later date and I can roll on it for you. I see that you have a bunch of papers. I'm happy to take anything that you have and I'll take a look over it. You know, the clerk, uh, last month. Do you, do you see anything? I have the Which copy. clerk did you file it? Um, I have it right here. The copy. It was with Marilyn Burgess. Is that for us? Mr. Clerk, right? We would still get it then, right? Or no? You filed it under this case number or the felony court case number? No, I filed it for this one on August 9th. It has, I have this case number on it. The 2522688. Yeah, that's it. I don't know. I don't see anything. Oh, wait a second. I see a motion for discovery. Is that it? It's a motion for discovery? Yes. Is that the only one that you've done? So far. Okay. I, I have to talk to officers in back. If you give me five minutes, let me take a look at it. And then I'm going to give you a copy so that you can look at it as well. Let me, sure. let me print it out. Um, Pavel, I'm printing it out for you. If you want to just take a look at it real quick. All right, at this point, they take a small break so the judge can do judge stuff and the prosecutor can receive and review the motion. And let me tell you something. It's not every day that we get to see a judge read out loud and laugh at a motion on the record. But today, we do. Mr. Emmett Tom, I've gotten your motion. Have you read it? <clears throat> yes, Your Honor, I've read through it. And? Uh, Your Honor, at this time, um, the state would, I mean, the state wouldn't even be able to comply with this order because it's asking for an immediate order of discovery. It sounds like spontaneously I need to give well, other than the that, opposing party. I mean, and is, is, there, is he asking? And it's not, the language is not aligned with crime procedure or penal code. But beyond that, the only two uh pieces that are requested that are reasonable um that i can produce with a timeline uh are one and seven so, mr emmett tom understand that you will get discovery but sometimes it takes time it's not immediate it takes time to build a case what to get videos 911 calls reports from officers it takes time it's not immediate in your motion, I guess it says he wants an immediate, immediate order. There's just no way. We can't. An inspection. Yeah. But we will get it to you as, as he gets it, he will give it to you. I can grant you the order. I will take off the immediate provision, but I can, I can grant you everything that you want. I'll give you a, a, their case file. I can give it to you when they get it. Yes, uh, but Judge, this, this discovery order is requesting things outside of the scope of discovery. Well, I'm not going to give him the kitchen sink. I mean, like what? Everything else. I mean, so one and seven are uh, aligned. One is requesting any documents, papers, books, accounts, letters, sorry, letters photographs, videos, which are body cam, objects or tangible things, not privileged, which constitute or contain evidence. Of course, I'm going to hand that over. Okay. Uh, two... Any and all names of any witnesses, the Harris County Superior Court, State of Texas. I mean, County that's so Harris, broad, Mr. Emmett. And, or any political. I mean, you want every single witness in Harris County? That's what that's asking for. You have to properly represent myself for the case. That's 4.2 million people. Really? Really? So that doesn't, it's. I mean, I'm not going to grant that. That's silly. It's too you want, it doesn't go into this. Imagine discovery. any and all names of any witness for the Harris County Superior Court, the state of Texas, County of Harris, or any political subdivision thereof may have. That's so broad that to even try to comply with that would take years. That's, I mean, in relation to this case, yes, nothing else. Nothing else matters. The only thing that matters is this case and nothing else. So I'm happy to comply with the names of witnesses in this particular case. Yes, I will do that. And I can mark on there for this case only. Are you okay with it? Your Honor, yeah. only in the event in the event that you were to grant something like that, it would need to be filed by the defendant. 
the, what you're granting is what is written, not what is subsequently modified. <laughs> okay. So, so I guess the language just needs I'll to just, be correct. Okay. So I'm, what I'm going to tell you is you're right. Well, I mean, yeah. right. So, so I, I just wanted to clarify I, that for the record. You're representing yourself. I can't do the work for you. Right. He so kindly is <laughs> reminding me that because I trying to right. Um, so that's too broad. We can go down the list if you wish, but again, yeah, let's do it. I mean, we have so three, a true and complete original or certified alleged contract with wet ink signatures between the petitioner, the Harris County Superior Court State of Texas and or political subdivisions thereof may have law states that in order for the Harris County and he's not, it's, I mean, it's not even citing law. Uh, valid lawful contract between the petitioner, let them bring it forward for petitioner's ex inspection or immediately dismiss all charges. Um, I, I believe this is going into UCC. This is not. Uh, I, I mean, here contract. you're going into the sovereign citizen type language. Sovereign, just common law. If it's common law, then why are you citing the UCC, which is a commercial code? And I'm sorry, but Texas has very specific statutes regarding driving with and without driver's license. So this would fall under statutory law, specifically from the Texas Transportation Code. Okay. So, Your Honor, um, yeah, I will not be agreeing to that. Here. There's no, in, I mean, you're saying a true and complete original and or certified copy of the alleged, alleged is not even spelled correctly, contract with wet ink signatures between the petitioner and the Harris County Superior Court. I mean. So I'm opposed to that. Um, and what contract? Contract complaint, whatever. I know this is statutory and it's not going over common law. So I'm not familiar with the statutes like I explained before. You're, well, you're a lawyer now. You're going to have to familiar yourself with it. You're trying me on statutes. I want to be tried on common law. You're going to have to do it. I'm not sure. There's no common law here. It's everything's done by statute. There's no common law here. It's all done by statute. And since you're the lawyer, you need to know that. I recognize the, sta the steps of the statutory steps. That's why I don't recognize. So I'm how, tried you, if, let me ask you this. How on earth are you going to represent yourself if you don't even know that? Once I get everything I need in my discovery. He's I not going to. He's not. No. He's going to give you body cams. He's going to give you. 911 call. He's going to give you witness lists, and that's it, right? Is there anything else that would be in here? Um, <clears throat> I would. Uh, so there may be dash cam. I need to check. So I haven't gotten the body cam or dash cam yet. I need to check what all of this. Uh, uh, Emma Tom, I mean, let's get real. If you're having problems with things of this very elementary nature, how are you going to represent yourself? I'm happy to give you a lawyer. You know, but. Some things are just, I mean, there's no. We must conclude this hearing with the remainder of the list as well, and then we can go with that. Well, hold on, it's just so he knows. So number four, a true and complete original and or certified copies of the criminal record of the attorneys of record, judge, magistrate, pro tem, commissioners, witnesses as well as all officers of this court yeah, that, that doesn't apply here really i mean you don't my criminal history you think i have criminal history yes after watching you rip the soul out of this sovereign citizen by his spine i wouldn't be surprised if you've left a trail of travelers behind you as you've grown into your judgehood Do I need to ask you to go to a higher court or a higher court look at this matter? Or I mean, you certainly can. You can do anything you want to in life until someone says no, right? But I don't know where you're going to get. I mean, appellate courts need jobs too. How far are you going to get? I don't know. How much money are you going to waste? I don't know. A true and complete certified copy of all oaths, commissions, as well as bonds of all officers of the court, including but not limited to, Deputies, court clerks, judges, magistrates, pro tems, commissioners that have or may decide to involve themselves in this matter, appointed or elected, signed under penalty or perjury on and for the official public record. Well, I don't know what bonds you're talking about. What bonds? 
Like James Bonds? Paris Bonds, Bid Bonds. Which ones? The Paris Bond, Bid Bonds. I'm not familiar with that. Political affiliation of any and all states, witnesses, and all officers of the courts. Well, I, I can't. State as opposed. I mean, I, you know, I really. Any evidence which in any way is exculpatory to the case? Yes. Anything in state's possession, I'm unopposed to. I will, I will produce anything exculpatory that's in our possession. But regarding the case. Number eight. Documented proof of claim of injury signed under penalties of perjury with all immunities waived from the judges of this court. Attorneys of record, the Harris County Superior Court, State of Texas County of Harris, as well as this court, and for the official record. Documented proof of claim of injury signed under penalties of perjury. So what are you referring to there? Or the opposing party who made the complaint. What? Against me, whoever made the complaint against me, who's the opposing party. Okay. Well, the Harris County District Attorney's Office. Or do they have to complain? Who's the, I don't recognize who that is. What do you mean you don't recognize? So the state of Texas or Harris County's, what was that? Right. So they alleged that you did something unlawful. As a result, the officer arrested you and then brought that information all to the Harris County District Attorney's Office. And then they, in a two-prong matter, number one, I found probable cause in this case. And then a grand jury indicted you on your felony case. So I it's the been, Harris County. I haven't been indicted on that. I just came from upstairs. I haven't been indicted on that case yet. Has it, has it been indicted or no? Oh, well, I mean, they have, I think, uh, up to 180 days to indict you. But... Um, Right. Not been an idea. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess would it be the information is that he's asking for? But you want the charging instrument, I guess, is what you want. Your Honor, again, I think it's just a. I know that it's a total so misunderstanding. Um, but uh, if it were rephrased correctly, I can better understand what is being asked. And therefore, that's why I cannot agree to this order because I, I get it. But I'm it trying to go through with him align. so that he understands. If it aligns asking. with what, if it aligns with something I can understand, sure. I mean, I, I I can understand what's being asked, and then I can turn it over. But I don't have that. This is not that. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. You know, um, I'm. Yeah, I don't know what's not being understood. Mostly. Here, let's go through number 13, right. just because it's a, there's a lot here that you got, 16, and, and it's already one, one third. The CUSIP number tied to this case, which will show that this court and or officers of the court are profiting off this case, and it is trading on the stock market on and for the official public record. <laughs> It's not that often that we get to see a judge literally laugh at a sovereign citizen in his face and with good cause. I mean, I am the trustee for the name Eton Emmaton. Let's put this right here. I've been a beneficiary for their name. I've been the trustee. I have my, all my paperwork that I need to prove to the court. I mean, and that may well be good for federal this. stuff, but not for us. This is state. Not familiar with a lot of statutes, but yeah. <laughs> a copy of all officers of the court registration report and profile, which is registered under Dunn and Bradstreet on and for the official public record. Yeah, you're going to have to go through this motion more. It needs to be more specific. Um, I'm, uh, you know, <clears throat> just for the record's purposes, the state is opposed to this motion in its entirety at this time. So not one in seven. Days. Not with the media, not that language. Oh, no, right. And we okay. can't modify that. Um, so it needs to be more specific. You need to have a more like realistic guideline. They can't give you stuff immediate because he may not even have it in his possession. So I can't order him to give you something that he doesn't have in his possession. Um, how soon can they get a trial date? With it? I mean, my next court date, will they have it? Or how soon? Uh, I, don't, I don't even know. I mean, 
Body cam and dash, um, I can escalate that by the next uh, court date. The lab, I am unsure of a timeline at this time. The lab of the uh, substance. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, I'm going to tell you now, it takes a lot. It takes quite a while to get labs done because, I mean, you imagine we live in a city with 4 million people. Do you know how many people get arrested with illegal, uh, alleged illegal substances that have to be tested? You get in line in front of everybody else. I have the lab results from the store that I got it from. I have the store that is in the lab result papers that they got it from in Houston. So I could submit that as well if, you, if it makes it quicker. I mean, I know you still have to do your own. I know that you're saying that, but there's remember, there's always two sides to the story. True. So they need to test what they have to see what that is. And that it's going to take a while, but it'll get done. You just be patient, but it'll get done. At this point, we are pending body cam dash in the lab. That is what okay. the discovery is pending. In the um, typically, what we do is we'll set it out 30 days, and then we'll just have you come back. And when you come back in 30 days, we'll see where they are. And then at that time, you guys can make a plan to go over the evidence. And I, I don't, you're not going to give him a copy though. He's just going to have to review it. I believe it's, it's subject to inspection. Right. So you're going to have to come bring a computer. Um, USB. You, you, is it, it's not through VHS, it's through. I'm unaware. I'll familiarize myself more before the next court date of the transfer of. You're going to probably need to bring yourself a computer that has a CD-ROM because usually they have stuff on CD-ROM drives or on, on CDs that, so that you're going to have to be able to look at it. Any kind of dash cam, any kind of body cam, they usually put it on a CD-ROM or on a CD for you to be able to look at it. The only other thing I need you to do is I need you to swear to us that you're not going to drive. I am making it a condition of your bond. I hold that until no. I put all this some stuff in my paperwork. I don't drive, no. I don't go by no. driver's license. No. I have my passport that I do go no. by. I need you to do it now. Okay. I need you to do it. And I'm making it a condition of your bond that you sign the document that you're not going to drive. I don't want to convey a contract or consent to anything or agreements to anything like that because I'm still trying to see the. I'm going to revoke your bond if you're not, if you if you don't sign it. I'm going to revoke your bond. That's it. I, we got to I got to be forced to sign that. If I don't sign it, I can't have the option to take that. Paper. Oh, no, I'm not. I, you don't have to sign it, but I'm going to revoke your bond. I have never seen someone work so hard to both stay out of jail and put himself back in jail at the same time. It's simple. You can either not drive and remain free, or you can choose to not contract with the court and face the consequences of your choices, which in this case is a revocation of your bond. What matter of that? Sorry? I don't understand why my bond will get revoked because of that. Because I am ordering you as a condition of your bond not to drive, convey, travel, any way you want to put it, behind the wheel of a car in Harris County, Texas, unless you are properly licensed with a Texas driver license and liability insurance in your name. I go by my U.S. passport now. I don't go by my Texas driver license. I don't go by my license anymore. Not Nevertheless... I'm having you sign a document that you understand and that you promise that you're not going to do it. I don't understand it fully, but that's why. If you don't, that's okay. But I am going to revoke your bond. And that's it. Correct. Are you forced to sign this right now? Or it's like, cause... You don't have to sign it. You know the consequence. You're hearing it now. If you've never heard it before, you're hearing it now. I'm not going to speak. For the entirety of the case. I mean, I can get my driver's license. And show if you do, if you get your driver's license and show but me I'm that you have. I'm not a commercial driver. I don't, yeah, I don't engage in commerce. I don't do it. Do you think that the five year old kid that gets hit and killed in a car or the 69 year old grandmother that ends up paralyzed from an accident cares whether you were conveying, whether you were in commerce, non commerce? Injuries don't care whether you're conveying, whether you're traveling. Accidents happen whether you're conveying, whether you're driving, whether you're traveling. That, that doesn't care, right? When you get into an accident, it doesn't matter in what method you're doing it. An accident is just that. And if you have an accident, I want to make sure that the other party 
will be taken care of. I'm only asking you to follow the law. I'm not asking you to split the atom here. Great. Break the law or anything that, but I'll, Great. I I'm asking you to sign time. this. If you don't, you don't have to, but I'm going to revoke your bond. That's it. And um, Mr. Emmettone, if you get a Texas driver's license and you get insurance, I won't take this deal off. That's what I believe in, and let's believe the Constitution. I don't know it. Yeah, well, you can believe that paper has nutritional value, but it doesn't mean that if you eat a ream of it, that you're going to not die. In other words, change your belief system because it's wrong, it's detrimental to your health, and it sucks. That's okay. Hey, trying to apply that. I need to get a license in insurance when I work to be a commercial driver for this day. I don't commercial drive anymore. I don't do medical transportation. I'm just a... Did you hear what I said about an accident, about whether you're conveying I understand traffic? exactly what you mean about the accident. Okay. I know if I was to get on the accident in a row with no insurance, I could get sued and it'll be a civil matter and I go to jail. I understand that. That's why I drive. I travel very cautious. I don't... Uh, 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 you just said I drive. I, I drive. You said the magic words. Yeah, I was a driver. Come on. Don't be Helen Keller. Come on. And I'm trying to protect all of Harris County. I don't know You're protecting you. I'm protecting all the 4.2 million people here. That's what I'm doing. Because if you get into an accident, I know that you're not going to be out of dime out of your pocket. But all those other people, they're going to be out of a crap load of money. And I'm going to do everything in my power to protect every single person of Harris County. And I don't care if I offend you. I don't care if I make you mad. I don't care if it, your sensibilities are upset. Don't care. I don't. All I want is every person protected. And that's it. And I'm doing what the law requires. I'm not asking you to do anything that's not outside the law. And you, as a acting as a lawyer, should be able to look it up and see. Because it's all in the transportation code. So... You can sign it. If you don't, I'll have you meet with Stephen. That's it. Is one of my rights reserved? They're reserved. I'm uh, waving my rights to the court. No. I mean, that's waving my rights. It's a contract. It's me. What, what, why, what right are you waving? My right to travel. That's infringing my right to travel with the Constitution. No. No. Take the Dodge Patas. I don't know what that means. Happy trails. Use your feet. You can travel with your feet. I can't. I live in Austin. I only live uh, here in Houston. Take a bus. Take an Uber. But I want to make sure if you're caught driving, I'm going to put you in jail. And I'm going to make your bond so high, you will spontaneously combust. Because I want you to understand that I mean business. And I'm protecting every single person I can. And that's it. Sign this right now. No, no. I mean, to me with jail or arrest if I don't sign this. Right correct. Now. I mean, that is I'm correct. Having, That's correct. Prisonment if I don't sign this. This is on the record. It's on a record. I have a reporter right here, and it's on video. So as you can see, his entire belief system is nothing more than a LARP. He's only doing all of this so that he can be the special one at the family dinner that he's not even invited to. Because when it all comes down to it, he accepts the jurisdiction of the court and he doesn't have any problem contracting with him so that he can stay out of jail. Now before we get out of here, Judge Fleischer had to call him back in to ask him a quick question about his signature. Okay, Judge, go ahead. Okay, so we're back on the record in 2522688. I had Mr. Imitom sign an affidavit promising us he's not going to drive, travel, convey in a car. And he signed it as, it says EC, is that right? ECE. ECE slash all rights reserved UCC 1 103. Is that your signature? Okay, I'm still going to hold you to this if I find that you drive. And I'm going to tell you now, you will end up going to jail. Do you understand? Yes, I just want to reserve my rights. That's all. That's all. Understand, I'm, I'm going to hold you to it if I catch you driving. It's going to go sideways real quick. Okay, good. All right. Do you want to drive any motor vehicle without the protocol? Do you want to drive any motor vehicle without the protocol? 
Done. Sure. Have a great day, guys. Thank you for being patient. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. I really enjoyed watching Judge Fleischer, and I'm sure you can expect more from him in the near future. So if you liked the video, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike. But don't forget to leave a comment below and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss any of my content. I'm Team Skeptic, and I'm out.